Two of the best things ever published uh, about the 9-11 attacks are these two books. Uh, you know about the 9-11 Commission, right? The 9-11 Commission in investigation into what happened on 9-11. Um, they, of course, did the definitive official study of what happened that day. And they published it, when they published the 9-11 Commission report, they put it out, you might remember, as a trade paper, paperback. Uh, it was cheap, it was 10 bucks, um, and they took care to write it in a narrative style so it would be kind of read like a novel. Essentially, they wanted it to be super accessible, and it was a bestseller when they released it this way. They did not want this to be one of those typical blue ribbon, put it on a shelf and nobody ever reads it reports. So I think that was a really admirable approach to try to make widely accessible the findings of the 9-11 report. But the even better thing they did is that they published an official comic book of the same report. It's the official graphic novel, a graphic adaptation of the real 9-11 Commission report. And as you can tell, it is much slimmer, it is much easier to read, it's full of pictures, it's laid out like a comic book. And although it contains the same information as this big book, it's laid out in a way that, that can be even more accessible to people who might not like the idea of, of digging through something like this, however accessible they made it. Uh, you could still buy the graphic adaptation of the 9-11 Commission report. I highly recommend it, um, whether or not you're interested in the 9-11 Commission or whether you just like graphic novels. So that's one. My second entrant, though, in um, my fake book club of Rachel's most recommended books about 9-11 um, is this one. This was actually put out by, by Popular Mechanics, the magazine that you always read when you're at the airport, even if you don't want people to see you reading it. Um, Popular Mechanics wrote this book not about the 9-11 attacks overall or their larger meaning. It's not like a holistic take on what happened in the attacks that day, the way that the 9-11 Commission was. This was written specifically to take on the claims of the people who said that 9-11 didn't really happen or that 9-11 was an inside job, that 9-11 was not actually an attack on our country but was rather a hoax perpetrated by our government in order to enslave us or something. Uh, the geeks and engineers at Popular Mechanics went through the conspiratorial 9-11 was an inside job arguments. They went through them piece by piece as geeks, showing that, yeah, those were not missiles attached to that supposedly civilian plane. That's actually just what the bottom of that kind of plane looks like. They went through all the conspiracies about the supposedly planned explosions that took down all those buildings, taking those theories apart with the help of, for example, seismographs from Columbia. Columbia University. They just go through it point by point, refuting the conspiracy theories about 9-11, debunking 9-11 myths, why conspiracy theories cannot stand up to the facts. Popular Mechanics did it as a series in their magazine, and then they did it as this cheap book. You can still get it. It's very good. But of course, it didn't work. The 9-11 conspiracies have stood up to the facts disproving them. The 9-11 conspiracies have not gone away because they are too ideologically and, I think, emotionally satisfying to the people who espouse them. They're too satisfying to let the fact that they have been thoroughly refuted get in the way of continuing to enjoy the way that conspiracy makes you feel. The people who foment conspiracy theories like the 9-11 truther stuff. These same folks have also been selling the idea that the mass shootings in Aurora, Colorado, and at the Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut, they've been fomenting the conspiracy theories that those things didn't actually happen. There was no Aurora shooting in that movie theater. It was faked. Or if it did happen, it was not perpetrated by the guy who we think of as the gunman. It was actually done by the government to, you know, enslave us all or something. And same thing for the Sandy Hook shootings. Now, of course, those same people fomenting those crazy conspiracy theories are also trying to sell the idea that the Boston Marathon bombing did not happen. Or if the Boston Marathon bombing did happen, it was done by the government. It's an elaborate hoax to make us believe that we were attacked when really we weren't attacked, it was our government doing it to us. It's all part of the way the government controls us or something. Uh, to be clear, I'm not talking about family members of the bombing suspects saying we believe our family members are innocent. That's a whole different thing. What I'm talking about is full-blown American conspiracy theories that the U.S. government itself bombed the Boston Marathon. Did you take any questions? Well, sir, why were a lot of speakers telling people in the audience to be calm moments before the bomb went off? Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and promote homeland security by sticking their hands down on the camps on the streets? No. Next question. Why was people being told prior? 9 30 tomorrow morning. Why were people next being told prior to the bombs going off to stay calm? That's a false flag, gentlemen. It's a
more TSA on the street to rob our civil liberties. We know your whole manifesto. That was day one of the Boston Marathon bombings. The very first question put to law enforcement and government officials when they held their press conference to explain to people what was going on, the very first question was somebody alleging that the government had bombed the marathon. It was a false flag attack. And it was not just that one time that that happened. This kept happening at the press briefings. I tell you tonight that there was bomb drills Monday morning. We got photographs on Infowars.com, folks. Uh, Next question, please. Next question, please. Yes. 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 Why are you denying there was bomb drills? The conspiracy theorists claiming that there was not really a Boston bombing, that it was the government blowing us up on purpose so that they can enslave us or whatever. This is not a freelance thing. Uh, these guys are mostly associated with a popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Uh, the host of the show is a man named Alex Jones. Um, yesterday afternoon, Matt Drudge, who's the purveyor of the most influential conservative website in the country, the Drudge Report, yesterday afternoon, Matt Drudge tweeted this. He tweeted, I've privately told friends that this will be the year of Alex Jones. One hell of a broadcast in such a homogenized media. Again, this is from the most influential figure in conservative media who is not named Roger Ailes at Fox News Channel. And this is the guy he's now endorsing, saying it's this guy's year. The government lies out of hand. You're saying, well, then why do you believe in the moon landing? Because I have sources inside NASA. They put on some fake stuff for you. See, there was a lie. See, it's not just did we go or didn't we go. You were shown the Tinker Toy stuff because you're not supposed to see what they really got. You're not supposed to know the thousands of astronauts that have died. Oh, yes. In fact, I should do a whole show on that. In fact, I should, this is the kind of stuff will get you killed. The night of the Boston Marathon bombing, uh, that same conspiracy theorist guy uh, said, quote, our, our hearts go out to those that are hurt or killed, Boston Marathon, but this thing stinks to high heaven, false flag. And by false flag, he means a cloak and dagger, super extra, uh, double top secret black ops operation that the government carries out in such a way as to make it look like the operation was done by somebody else. He means the U.S. government bombed Boston. So our own government could make it look like we were under attack by somebody else so they could use it to their advantage somehow. That's false flag. That's what he's saying happened in Boston. He thinks that happens everywhere. He thinks that about everything. You saw them stage Fast and Furious. Folks, they staged Aurora. They staged Sandy Hook. The evidence is just overwhelming. He also thinks the evidence is overwhelming that the government staged the Oklahoma City bombing, that the government staged the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. He also says the evidence is overwhelming that President Obama is now personally the global head of Al-Qaeda. See, folks, the evidence is just overwhelming. Do I have to spell it out for you? Are you blind? A Republican state representative from New Hampshire this week uh, posted this statement on Glenn Beck's Facebook page. Again, she's an elected official. She's a state representative in New Hampshire. Uh, she posted a link to this Alex Jones InfoWars YouTube video that's titled, Proof! Boston Marathon Bombing is Staged! She then compliments Glenn Beck by saying that the Boston Marathon bombing happened, quote, just as you said it would happen. The Boston Marathon was a black ops terrorist attack. Infowars broke the story, she says. When her local paper, the Foster's Daily Democrat in New Hampshire, called her for clarification, she insisted that she meant every word, saying she cannot rule out the possibility that the U.S. government carried out the Boston Marathon bombings. Also, there was something about John Kerry and a Saudi Arabian man at the bomb site. Something, something, info wars, something, something, black ops, something, something. Are you that blind? Literally, that was from her quote at the end of the article. Are you that blind? The Glenn Beck, Alex Jones uh, conspiratorial froth on this uh, is not just bubbling up among random elected Republicans in state legislatures whose names aren't bother worth bothering pronouncing on television. Uh, this sort of stuff is also sloshing into the U.S. Congress. Four Republican members of the House, including the Republican member of Congress who chairs the Homeland Security Committee now, and the Republican member of Congress who used to chair the Homeland Security Committee, they have written a letter now to the Homeland Security Department demanding an investigation into Glenn Beck's conspiracy theory about the guy who Glenn Beck is pitching as the real bomber in Boston, who naturally is being protected and controlled by the U.S. government, by Janet Napolitano and by First Lady Michelle Obama. Oh, yes, the First Lady is in on it, too. 
just like Sandy Hook and Aurora and Oklahoma City and the moon landing. It's all the government coming to get you. The, the right has always had this to contend with. The Alex Joneses of the world and the Glenn Becks of the world has al always been out there on the fringe right, uh, eager to decode anything that seems complex or upsetting in the world to make it very simple for you, to make it very simple so that every story in the world has the same implication, which is that all of your suspicions and prejudices are true, that the world is in fact a very simple place, that people really are out to get you, and that you do understand all of it, and that you can trust no other sources of information about the world other than these gentlemen who would please like you to send another 1995 for another month's subscription since they are the only people who will tell you the real truth. Conspiracy theories are a great American pastime. And not all of them are on the right. There's plenty on the left as well. But the American right right now is embracing this stuff way more overtly than they have in the past. And it is happening at the same time that the supposedly non-fringe conservative media, the part of the conservative media that's supposed to seem like the mainstream media, it's happening at the same time that that part of the conservative media has decided to essentially give up all pretense of restraint on just blaming Muslims, blaming the Muslim religion, blaming Islam, calling for Americans to blame all Muslims, suspect all Muslims in response to the Boston bombings. We know there's one bottom line. In the Muslim communities around the world, they do not like us. American Muslims, they largely remain silent. This is a situation we all face in America. The jihad is real, radical Muslims are killing innocent people and threatening the world. You know, we, we bring these people in even though they're, they're radical Muslims. They, we have to figure they don't much like us. We bring them in. Let me just say this about uh, the access that Muslims have in this country, whether they're American Muslims or whether they're here on a student visa, it, it is enormous, the access that they have, and it is virtually all radical. Senator, uh, very quickly, there are some who are getting very leery of all the, 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 the Muslim students in, in America. What other theology in this world justifies murdering innocent people? The answer is only radical Islam allows terror murder. That's the truth. He's also very dangerous. He's, he's kind of been like the Muslim apologist in Congress for a long time. He swore, he raised his right hand uh, and took the oath of office on the Koran. If you remember in 2007, Keith Ellison did. I think it's time for profiling, though, don't you, Ange? I think it's time for pro profiling because... I do. Talking about a Muslim member of Congress there, Keith Ellison, he just saw last hour on Chris Hayes' show. The right is taking the gloves off after the Boston, Boston bombing. The most influential conservative media online is full on embracing the conspiracy theorists who say it was the government who attacked. It was the government who staged the Boston bombing as a false flag attack. On the televised conservative media, it is a full on religious war now. The problem is Muslims. The solution is an American war on Muslims. These forces have always existed on the right. And they are now, though, as mainstream as they have ever been. Where are the countervailing forces on the right, if there are any? And where does this all end? 